have quite a bit to get through. I'm trying something new. I'm trying to use two devices so I can write better. So we'll see how that works out, all right? All right, so you have, uh, my God, I have forgotten about my thought. Imagine that has been sitting there for so long. Um, is it is it clear? Fighting with the wind will not always bring change. Sometimes we just need to adjust our sails. Yeah. When I when I when I developed this particular thought, it was because persons were um, trying to stick to their own method, their own approach to solving. Um, problems or to approach problems in, in power systems. And um, what I was encouraging here is that sometimes you just need to adjust how you think. Um, I know you guys, this particular group of still you particular, this particular group, you like numbers, I know that. You all love numbers. And protection may not give you all the numbers that you, you, you tend to enjoy. But nonetheless, you just may have to navigate difficult. Yes, it is. Um, but as I said, we'll try to make it interesting. So today, we want to look back at fault analysis, all right? We have looked at some basic um, stuff already. Uh, we have looked at some basic principles. Some of them I'll just refer you, you back to, so you'll review that in your own time. Um, but today, we're gonna look back at fault analysis and touch a little area that we had um, that we had overlooked for power systems. Yeah. So we'll do a quick um, run through in terms of um, symmetrical components. Um, we look at symmetrical networks, and of course, that is uh, linked to unsymmetrical faults. And as I said, we'll just expand a little on what we have already done, okay? So we start by just re reminding ourselves of uh, Fortescue's theorem, uh, which states that um, three unbalanced phases of a three-phase system can be resolved into three balanced systems um, of phases. And uh, the balanced sets of uh, components being your positive, negative, and zero sequence components. This is something that you would have already been familiar with. So as I said, just as a quick recap um, on the faults, we know that our um, sequence networks would be represented as shown. So we have our positive, we have our positive, we have our negative. And of course, from the, from the positive sequence, um, we know that the, the phase rotation is clockwise. So for this, we'll have A to B to C. And over here, again, we're still going clockwise, but of course, in terms of phase rotation, it would be reversed. Because this one would be A, C, B. All right, so and the idea that um, you use is to put a, an observer at a fixed point and just look at the phases that will pass the observer, All right? So in this instance, for the negative sequence, you'll see the A, then you'll see the C, then you'll see the B. For the positive sequence, with our observer here, yeah, you'll see A, then you'll see B, and then you'll see C, all right? For the negative, for the, did I, oops, okay, I deleted the zero sequence. So in terms of the, um, the matrix representation, the, the phases in terms, what did I get here? Anyway, the phases in terms of um, the sequence uh, values. So the phase voltages are same would be true for your phase currents. Um, your V, B, and C 
given by your t times your zero one two um, from your um, sequence networks. Well, um, as I said, if you if we had the currents, you would have I A, I B, and I C. Yep, and then these would be I I one I zero one and two. All right. And then, of course, once we, well, we, we, we know these basic principles. So the question is, how do we use them as part of our fault analysis? And to do that, um, we know that <clears throat> we have to represent each component within our system and then find the Thevenin equivalent. So what I'm going to be doing this, this, this afternoon into evening is to look at how we actually go about breaking down the network and finding um, the, the, the equivalent circuits that I would have given you um, last semester, all right? So that would be our focus today. So for your symmetrical, for your synchronous generator um, with, with these phase voltages, yes, and Z1 normally being equal to Z2, which is equal to the subtransient reactants, for the um, negative and positive sequence, yeah, those we get from the manufacturer. And of course, you know, that can be calculated, but usually you'll get it from the manufacturer. The zero sequence has both the zero sequence of the machine as well as the neutral impedance, because normally you would earth your generator. Well, for obvious reasons, eh? you would earth your generator. So you would then have your neutral impedance, which is either zero, assuming we have solidly, and that's the term we use. If we have solidly earth the generator, or if we solidly earth a component, it means that um, the neutral point has gone to earth without the, in, the, in, the insertion of, a, of an impedance, all right? So for your generator, you know, just as a quick reminder, we we'll have our Z1. And v, of course, remember the direction of the current, IA1, going out. And of course, V1 or VA1 would be equal to EA minus um, I1, um, Z1, all right? For the series, the negative sequence, all right, again, we have no source. So, you know, going back to what you already um, know, we'd have zero minus I2, Z2 to be equal to VA2. And of course, for the zero sequence, here we have the um, zero sequence of the machine, and we add three times the neutral or the earthing impedance, okay? So that combination, if we make that Z0, then we'll have zero, Z, zero minus I0, Z0 to be equal to VA0, all right? And of course, once we have that information, we go back to our matrix and we do our calculation, all right? Okay, um, for your transformers, um, again, we will, we will not, um, um, be overly concerned about the, 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 the phase shift. Suffice it to say, if we were considering the phase shift, yes, um, then it would simply be incorporated into the reactances that, that we, would have, um, we would have noted or we would have included in the network, all right? So for your transformers, the main consideration from a protection standpoint is whether you have you know, star or delta, where you have it connected. And this will be something that you will have to test on your, um, in, your, in your lab. Yeah? So the, that lab exercise, um, you would have to, you'll, you'll be testing the impact of star delta windings. And hopefully when we go through um, the example, this, this afternoon, 
you get a better appreciation for um, the, the, the theory behind having your star delta um, transformers. As I've said in, in, um, in power systems, the delta is used primarily for um, sectionalizing your, your, your network. Um, in, in other words, called allowing or preventing zero sequence to flow from one side of the network or one part of the network to another. Okay. And um, well, you remember the business of the only flow through grounded star at zero sequence currents. And of course, with the use of the A and the B contacts, where we show here. If zero sequence can't flow, then we'll close A. If it can't, then we'll close B. Yeah. And you know, we do that on either side of the transformer. And then, of course, our transmission line, uh, we will not get into using the self and the mutual impedances. Um, suffice it to say, um, you know, once you have Z1 for your transmission line, it means that you automatically have Z2. Yeah. And of course, you have Z0. And then for your static loads, those are represented primarily in a similar way to your transformers, all right? The only difference is that you do not have um, you know, two windings. And when I said similar, I'm speaking in terms of how do you treat with delta versus um, star, grounded star, yeah? Um, etc. On ground, it's there, etc. etc. So, going now to the basic principles again, some of it you have already seen, and I don't want to bore you too much, but you know, we still need to talk about it. We know for a single line to ground, Paul, that we have the um, components, the sequence components um, in series, or not the, well, the equivalent networks in series. So you have your positive, your negative, and your zero uh, in series. Um, of course, then making I1 being equal to I0 equal to I2. And for your double line to grow, we know we'll have the three networks in parallel, uh, giving us um, the, the vote, making the voltages equal. So, you know, V1, um, being equal to V2, being equal to V0. And then finally, for your line to line, um, we have here the positive and negative in parallel. Of course, there is no zero sequence flowing because we assume here that this is a B to C fault. All right. But of course, as you would, would appreciate, any two lines could have come in contact with each other. All right, so in a sense, um, students, I have run through in um, in 10 minutes or thereabout, yeah, 12 minutes, what I did with you in about three hours back in power system, right? And I'm sure you're not feeling any pain from that. And right? I'm looking at your faces and you almost look bored, like, you know, we already know this. Doesn't he know that we are among the top children in the class? You know? But my apology for boring you. Let's get into the, into the other stuff. So this is what you had on your um, final assessment, right? That's the question you had. And you were asked to find the per unit current flowing into the fault. You were asked to determine the fault, phase voltages at the fault point, et cetera. So, I gave you these networks. Yep. I gave you those three networks. The question is, the big question is, how oh, did you get to that stage? Because here is the question. All right. So let's take down a question for me. Um, yeah. Let's just take down a question. It's it's already in schoology. So you, in terms of the um some of the, 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 the information, you can ignore that because it, it's, it's already, it's, it's posted to Schoology. So if you have access to Schoology, we can just go straight into the, um, into the calculations.
Uh, we have this one. Yes. Okay, so here we have a system. We have two generators. All right. Um, note the fault point. It's on bus two. Yes, and uh, it's a 100 MVA system. And again, it's part of the Jamaican transmission network. All right. Okay, so the question is, oh, oh, I didn't get a question. <laughs> this is the data. Um, as I said, it's already in Schoology, so you can access this information. So let's just look at what is being asked. We want to determine the thermal equivalent for the positive, negative, and zero sequence uh, networks for a fault at point F. And um, hence or otherwise, determine the current flowing into the fault point, given that a line-to-line -line fault occurs. And then we want to determine the actual phase voltages at the terminals of the generator G1 during the fault, okay? Um, just allow me, to, I'm gonna, just close this for a moment and reopen it so that I can get some. Uh, let's make sure that it is. What am I doing? Uh, I'm just showing you my, my, my full screen. So let me get rid of that and restart. Let's see if I get the updates. No? Um, all righty. All right. So let's 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 look back at, at our network. The network, as I said, we have we have the generators. We have our transformers, and we have um, the lines. Okay. Now, in terms of the in terms of the, the generators, we're going to start with the positive sequence, and we know how to represent the generator. So I'll just um, go at this um, step by step. So we're looking at the. Are the positives All right, so for the positive sequence network based on based on what we we, we looked at before um remember what the generator um, looks like right for your generator representation it's just, uh, okay. I'm gonna go any further. Yeah. So it's just uh, a generator and an impedance. Okay. So for generator G1, first thing we're going to note is that that generator is connected one, one leg to earth. So we have here. We just put in the earth symbol. Let me just take it down a bit low. And we now insert for the generator. It's a generator with the reactants. So the uh, yeah, Mr. Johnson, welcome to the camera. I want to make sure you are here. Sir, I have it on. I'm not sure why it's not showing. Let me turn it off right there. Okay. What happened to Mr. Mr. What's his name? It's Christoph or something like that. All right. So 
so for the generator, the voltage you're gonna put there is one P. Uh, and the reactants um, for that generator was J0.2. Right. From the original circuit, we have the bus bar, so I can put my bus bar on. So that's the bus bar. And then I'm gonna go to the, the, the line at the top. So I, the, I first encounter a transformer. Yeah. And because it's positive sequence, the only thing I'll be considering there would just be the reactants. So we have the positive sequence reactants for the transformer. The transformer is connected to um, the line. So I have the line. And then I have the other transformer. And that now takes me to the second bus bar. And at the, at the bottom, I will do the same. So I'll have Transformer, line, transformer, and it goes to the bus bar. And then for on the other side, I have the other generator. And this thing goes. All right. The, the values we had for transformer at the top was J0.2, um, J0.3, J0.3, um, J0.15, Yeah, 0.2. All right, I hope my handwriting isn't too bad. Now we need to look at where the fault has occurred. And what we are going to be doing is to determine the Thevenin equivalent at that fault point. So where the fault occurs was at the top of um, bus bar two, yes? So to indicate that, simply put in another earthing sign. And we are now going to be looking into that point. For the third and equivalent. All right. And so what you have now is um, a network which, you know, we're going to reduce the network now. So looking in here, before I get into anything complicated, I can combine this section of the network. Do you agree with that? There's no way the fault is, I can't combine it. So for that, I can combine what is at the top, what on the top line, what's at the bottom. So if I do that, I get my, my generator remains, have my reactants, but in terms of it, the, the two lines, I know I have a single reactants up top, single reactants on the bottom. And so we, we, we still have the J0.2 of a one PU. And then at the top, we have 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 to give us 0 0.8. 
And below we have 0.15 plus 0.1.25 plus 0.4. And that also gives us 0.8. So we simplify this even further. And it's important students that each of these um, networks, as you, as you simplify the network, they are going to ensure that you draw, you redraw the circuit. This is one time when the resistance equation will not be a good idea. All right? So we are going to redraw the circuit. Um, and so I have it at that stage. And then, are you finished with that? Yes, sir. So we come now and we have So on the, where we have the point eight and the point eight, regardless of how we look at it, those two are in parallel, yeah? Now we give us point four. And then the point four plus the point two will give us point six. So we we'll have um, that, and then we come across to the other generator. So we have, uh, And what we are interested in, we're looking here. We're still looking into that point. So the question is, what's the impedance uh, looking in there? Yeah? And if we use the principles that we are all familiar with, this is J0.6, and this is J0.2. So looking into those terminals, into that, um, we would have at the fog point, it will be 0 0.6 in parallel with 0 0.2. Right? And so we end up with, and of course, the open circuit voltage would be one per unit. So we have one PU and 0.6 in parallel with 0.2 gives us J0.15. All right. Now, obviously, I don't want to have all the fun. So I, I, I want to be fair. I want to be fair to you, right? So you go ahead and do the negative sequence on. Oh, but I can't, well, I didn't get the values, no? no? So it has backfired on me, right? Now you get to this time. So I'll have to find some other way of... Right. So for the, for the negative sequence, this is what the network looks like. So we would now remove the sources. And I'm still looking into, into this point. All right. Um, the values here, um, of course, which values would change for the negative sequence? Based on theory, which values would change? Or which values would you expect a difference from the positive sequence? The transformers, sir. No, the transformer is a static device. Sir, would it be the line? The line also is static. If you, if you, if you, um, 
if you recall, in Power World, you, you would put in the same information for both your line and, and your transformer. So you had to be deliberate in Power World to identify which is which because the data would be the same. You recall that? I mean, you, you may not have been focusing on that. You, you just wanted to get out of the lab, but um, <laughs> you actually had to distinguish between transformer and line because the data would be the same because they are both static devices, all right? So the negative and the zero sequence, the negative and the positive sequence reactances would be the same. So because the, um, the, 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 the generator is a rotating device, the negative and, this, and the positive are not necessarily the same. All right. So for your for your generator, this is now one two. Everything else remains the same. So go ahead for me. So the transformer values and the uh, the, the transformer and the line values are the same for the positive and the negative uh, um, sequence values. So go and do the equivalent circuit for me. All right. So, and the volume? Sorry, it's 0 0.10. What, what values are used for the, um, remember, you know, the, the lines, the transformers are 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. I don't, I'm, mm -hmm. And you had um, 0 0.15, 0 0.4, point. So the, 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 the two parallel sections would remain 0 0.8. Mm -hmm. You had said what? Sorry, Buchanan. What is it? 0 0.10? Yes, sir. Then we well, don't know what I'm talking about. You, you oh, have you forgotten? Is it Christmas? Who do? Uh, don't answer. Just so what, is the, what, what is the answer? Uh, J0.10 per unit. No, sir. Sir, is J0.0975 per unit? Thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. I warned him, but he never, he never took the bit. Listen, folks, you cannot eat decimal places with this with this thing. All right, remember, in power engineering, we are dealing with mega up to giga, all right? So when you, when you take off um, my point zero, uh, zero, what, one, two, five, or two, five, zero, two, five, all right? Multiply that by a um, uh, 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 hundred kilo. What do you get? Enough. That was on it. Right, Mr. Bukana? Oh, yes, sir. We don't want to have to make that sort of intervention again. I honestly did not recognize that you had rounded, rounded it up. That is how, you know, far fetched it seemed to me. When you said point, point 0.1. Right. So, in terms of the, the penultimate uh, network, you had um, so you had J0.52 and J0.12, and that gave you. J0.0975. All right. No. The, 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 the most challenging network in most instances would be your zero sequence. All right. But we're just gonna take it step by step. Okay. And um, 
show we navigate that. So we start with the with the generator. Now, the first generator, um, I'm looking back at first. The first generator, well, it seems to be solidly grounded. So I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna assume that that is the case, all right? So we have, and then we come to our bus bar. So this is J0.06. Were you able to take note of the um, windings of the transformers? Did you take note of those when you took down the question? Or do I need to go back to that? Go back to it. Are you looking at it at on Schoology? Sorry, it's on Schoology, so you don't have to go back. All right, cool. Yeah, so well. Let's start with the, with the transformer at the top. All right? That transformer, um, what, what, what's the winding we have there? Delta, delta. Sir. Delta, delta, good. So, which letter would be at the top for the transformer? A or B. At the top, when dealing with the transformer for the symmetrical um, components, which letter is at the top? It's A. So we close A if what? If zero sequence can if flow. If zero sequence can flow. So it means that only with a grounded star would we close A. If we have a, if we have a delta or um, an ungrounded star, then we close B. Fair enough? So let us see how this works. So I start out and I come to the first winding. With the delta, A would remain open, yes? So there it is, open. But I close B. So I then go and show that I'm closing B. So I put an earth point. I would then insert in the zero sequence reactants for the transformer. And now on the secondary side of the transformer, it's a delta delta. So again, B would close and A would remain open. What do you think? So we would have here, and that is A open. So we have dealt with transformer one at the top. And then we now put in our transmission line. And then I go to um, transformer two at the top. So, Dab, you're following us? So, Johnson? Yes, sir. Sir, Antonio said he's have internet problems, so that's why he can't have his camera on. Okay, all right. All right. So, we now go to Transformer 2. Question. What, um, what, 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 what are the windings for Transformer 2? Third ground is star delta. Good. So we are gonna close on the on the primary side. We're gonna close A. So that is A closed. And then on the we, we then put in the reactants. So that's the reactants. And on the secondary side, because it's delta, we close B and A remains open. And then that takes us out to the bus bar, where we then have the other generator. We're good? Don't worry about all them openings and, you know, 
it, it, it will pan out quite, quite nicely. Then we go to the lower line. And for transformer three, what's the connection? Grounded star, star. Is it grounded star, or grounded star, grounded star? I believe it was grounded star, star. It's grounded star, grounded star. Grounded star, grounded star. All right. So you're gonna close A. I mean, I showed you all the A's up top with it with a circle. So you understand where I'm closing it, right? So the reactants there, A is closed. So we include the reactants. But on the and below the transformer, you see that it is earth run impedance. Yes. So because it is earth drawn impedance, you are going to then put in the three ZN. And the per unit reactance there is what? 0 0.03? Yes, sir. All right. So it means no. By the way, you know, I didn't know that I didn't even put in values up top because you're going to see that it really doesn't matter. All right. So down here we have J0.15 and then J0.09. And so A is closed and we go to the, tran to the transmission line. And that is J0.6, yes? And the other transformer, similar to this one. So we also have the A is being closed and that is it. So this then gives us 0 0.25. All in per unit, J0.06. All right. And so in, 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 um, in looking at, at the fog, we, we're still up here looking at the fog point. We're looking into that point. So what we have, okay, and then at the fog point now we have the J006. Right. So this is J0.06. 06 J um, 1.09. Yes, over here you have J 0 0.06. So this works out to uh, 1.15. Point zero six to give us J zero point zero five seven. All right. So we now have our our our, our three networks. And now that we have our three networks, we can tackle. The, 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 the challenging part of the question. Because remember, Anna, this is just the intro. Right. So you have done part A. Any question? You have to forgive me now. I really keep forgetting who, who I'm dealing with. I remember you guys are there. Yeah. So, so I have a question. Um, <laughs> I think I just set up myself anyway, yes. <laughs> no, it's nothing difficult. It's just that it's J0.09, so what is that representing um, in the first circuit? 
point zero nine. The point yes, zero nine. Yes, sir. Yeah, that is three Z N. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we we know we are now asked for the 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 current due to the line to line fault. Right. Um, so just to refresh your memory, I want you to go ahead and do that for me. So I give, we have until, uh, all right, I'll, we're going to wrap up this section in another um, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then we get into part two of, the, of today's class. So those um, calculate for me the, <coughs> The fault current. Yep. Have an answer for me? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, final answer you want it in per unit or actual? What was the question? Mm hmm? I think it was, I didn't, I just jotted it down, I didn't write it down. I don't have school or job either. Okay. So I believe it was actual value. Uh, uh, question asked you to, um, I'm sorry, let me just. Let me, let me. Analysis question. The question asked you to the current flowing into the fault, given that a line to line fault occurs. Okay. All right. So it, it can't be in per unit. Okay. So, so it's 5,855. Point six five seven eight amperes or five point eight five five six kilo amperes. Into the fourth point. So let's take it through it then. What is the um, what what two networks did you connect? Or which networks did you connect? Connected the positive and negative sequence in parallel with each other, technically in series. Okay, so it is one over, one over 0 0.15 plus 0 0.0975. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's, and so I1, what you got for I1? I1 is negative J4.0404 repeating. Okay, beautiful. Which means that I2 is? The opposite of, um, inverse of this. So. Okay. All right. So when, when you put that in per unit, what were you getting? Okay, so the final I, B, or I, C. So that's it equal is. to six point. Uh huh. 6.998185 per okay. unit. So one at, uh, one at 180 and one at zero. Yes, sir. Beautiful. So now, let's go to the, the base value. I suppose that's where the phone comes in. All right, so since it's part of the Jamaican transmission network, I use since it already told us we're using 100 MVA base, I use 69 KV as the okay. base. All right, now. So, Mr. Darby. Where's Mr. Darby? 
Mr. Darby. You with us, Mr. Darby? Where are you? Right. Oh, you can't talk. Mr. Buchanan? Yes, what's, the, what's the problem with the base voltage that Mr. Duncan is using? He, he's perfectly correct up to that point. Why is it that the base voltage he's using would be incorrect? Yes, he's using 69 kVA, correct, sir? No, I'm saying he's using 69, yes, and I'm saying it's incorrect. Why? Okay. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure, sir. All right, fair enough. No problem, no problem. We're all here to learn. Ms. Gray? Ms. Gray? Um, yes, sir. Why, why would that be incorrect? Oh. Sir, would you use like the, the 13 point? No, I did not ask you to. I said, why oh. would it be incorrect? Why? Uh, uh. I don't want you to give so me a value, you know, just tell me why it's, it has to be incorrect. Sir, sir. Sir, um, 69 kV is a transmission voltage. If you use the 13, use the generated voltage, sir. Absolutely. The fault, Mr. Duncan, is on the generator bus. All right. The generator is not operating at 69. So what I'm what I'm trying to do is to get you to shift your thinking to another level. It it it, it can't be root root anymore, right? You with me? So although we have gone through this already, there are just some intricacies that you would have missed, you possibly would have missed or might have missed um, when we went through it. Um, but now that we're back here, we have to emphasize them. Okay, so the, 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 the actual currents were 29.28 kiloamps at 180 and, um, and zero respectively. Okay. The, the third part of the question asks us now to determine the actual phase voltages at the terminals of generator one. So we want to find out. Um, you, you have the you have the, the, the fault current at the fault point, meaning on that bus, you have your all right, so this is where your fault is located. And the current there is a 29.08 kilohertz. And what we are asking is, tell us what is happening over here. And this is why we know how to step it to this level where, you know, we now have to um, look at the entire network, okay? So what, I, what we are going to do is to look at where the fault occurs or, or, or occurred. We're gonna start with the positive sequence, all right? Look at the positive sequence. For the positive sequence, um, sorry about that. For the positive sequence, we have here, This is where we had started. The current is flowing towards the fault point. I mean, we know where the fault point is. It's up at the top, right? But it really doesn't matter if I put it up top or down below. What we know is that the current is going into the fault. So it's flowing out to the fault. That is the important thing. So what you have is that that is minus J um, 4.04, .04. good, 
And the reactances you had at this stage were 0 0.6 and 0 0.2. Good. But if you if you um go back to the to the to the, the circuit where we looked at the positive sequence, all right? You would see that. Over here, we have our point two, agreed? So the current that is going to the fault would have had to come from this generator and that generator. The one that is coming, this is generator one, this is generator two. So the current going into the fault will be fed by both generators, agreed? And let's be clear, it doesn't really matter that there are two generators, it's just that you have passive sequence going into the fall from those two parts. Therefore, therefore, in, in reducing the circuit, sorry, when we reduce the circuit to that point, here is my fault, we are getting current from here and from here. So all the fault current, all the fault current from generator one, in terms of the positive sequence, all of that current will pass through the line and the transformers. Doesn't matter how they are split, but all the current from generator one will go through those components. Do you understand that? So if yes, I come back, do what we're doing. That point four, that four point zero four, I would simply apply current divider. So I'll get IG one, meaning the generator one, and the positive sequence of that. So IG one one. So the positive sequence flowing from generator one, and that would be equal to. 0 0.2 over 0 0.8 times I1. And that gives us um, one point, uh, it's a quarter, good. So that's minus J1.010101. For you. Which means therefore that the voltage at the at generator terminal one, yes, VG one, one, yes, would be equal to and now this is where you have to be careful, students. This is where you have to be careful. Although all the current coming from the generator, because we are considering only the terminal voltage of generator one, it means I have to use here 0.2, because that's only for the generator. You with me? So at one per unit, we therefore have that current through that, so we have one minus, you know, one minus I1, Z1, and that gives me 0 0.798 per unit. Remember the current that is flowing, it's, it's flowing out, minus J1.010101. All right. So we find that, that per unit voltage. Whoa. All right. And we do the same for the, um, the negative sequence. Any questions of what I just did? All right. We do the same for the negative sequence. We have, we had, we 
So we have J0.52, we have J0.12. Yes, when we divide it, we get IG generator one, the negative sequence of that. We get 0 0.75. All right. And of course, V, G1 gives us 0 0.0. .0 um, Zero nine, zero nine one. Obviously, I'm, I've skipped a step, right? And of and you would not nest. You would you wouldn't have to find i zero. Why? Sorry, this is a line to line forward. It's a line to line. Excellent. All right. So you go ahead now and you find V, A, B, C. All right. And you would see that you would have a voltage drop as a result of, um, as a result of, 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 of that fault. Okay. And again, it was a 13.8. So that is consistent with, with, with our theory that um, during your fault, you are going to have a, um, you're gonna have a reduction in the voltage and very high current. So again, I have gone through this to show you some of the, the, the background details that would help you in your analysis, especially with your lab, all right? Um, we have shown that, yes, you can get the, what is happening at the fault point, but it also provides you information in terms of what is happening in the network. So if I, if I, and you know, I have been accused of this by persons who are ignorant to the fact that boy, my exam looked the same every year, All right? So what? we can do and what I'm going to challenge you to do as, as your first assignment, all right, don't worry. Everything I give you for power systems, they, they will be value. All right, there are many persons who actually benefited from some of the assignments that I gave you the other day. You know, uh, it was disastrous, so, but anyway. All right. So what you're going to do, listen carefully. You're going to shift the fault point. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me not make it so difficult. Let us simply make the fault align, align to ground fault. So you have all the networks, you have all the, 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 the networks that, um, that are required for the analysis. All you are going to do for the same fault point, you just make it align to ground fault. So let's start you there. Let me see how you approach that. And then I will give you something that I will mark. That, that, that's unfair? Yes, sir. All right. So you wait your feet, we discuss it. We discuss it tomorrow. And um, then I'll give you um, one that you, you take from scratch and, 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 and we'll create that one. Okay, any, any questions? Anything? Because you're gonna be working on your own. Anything you want me to clarify before we move on? No? All right, so we're going to jump back now in, into what we should have been doing today, talking about zones of protection. All right, let me just. Uh, 
All righty. All right, I'm not doing any fancy marking and drawing and writing, so I can leave that one there. Okay, so we, we're going to be talking about zones of protection, all right? Uh, so I, when we talk about a zone, and, and I, I believe I had introduced it to this before, right? Good. So we're talking about a piece of equipment along with its switch gear, okay? Um, so for protective zones, we have zones for your generator, your transformer. We also have it for buses, transmission lines, distribution lines, and in many instances, uh, motors, because when you have a fault with a large motor on the system, it behaves like a transformer. Your synchronous motors is going to supply energy um, to the system. So we have to take into consideration large um, industrial facilities. Okay. Um, we have already mentioned the fact that in many instances, you may have two pieces of equipment, like a generator and its transformer, as a single zone. So you're gonna the protection will consider both pieces of equipment. So it will not just look at the at the generator or the transformer, but as a unit. All right. It's important in protection to have what we refer to as overlap. So although you're doing the protection for a particular piece of equipment, because you have this overlap of zones. Um, the, 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 the creation of a fault in a particular zone will result in uh, the triggering of, uh, of, of, of activities in an adjacent zone or an overlapping zone. And that overlap is created by virtue of where the CTs are placed. So although I, I mentioned in power systems, that for your zone, or just now I mentioned it just now, your zones consist of the switch gear and and your your and the equipment being protected. In in reality, the zones are really defined, or the boundaries of the zones are really defined by your CTs. So the overlap that we are showing here, the overlap that we are showing here. Yeah, is based on these two um, CT. So the CT for zone one, it's over here, and and these that's that you're seeing there, are those polarity markings um, for your for your for your for your CTs. All right. Um, so you have one for zone one, you have one for zone two. They overlap, which allows you to have complete coverage of your network, all right? That's that's the primary reason for us having these overlaps and, and you'll see that in a minute. So we're breaking down the system and here we have all these zones. So you have um, zone one, which is your generator and the generator transformer. You have zone two, which is looking at um, the, well, that, that may be a part of the bus as well as the transformer, but it overlaps. All right, zone four, which really is protecting this bus bar. All right, that zone four also um, overlaps with um, zone five and zone two, zone three and zone six. What does that mean? It means that if I get a fault on the bus bar, so we're protecting now the bus bar, that's what, the protection in zone four is four. If I then get a fault on the bus bar, what will happen is that it will trigger these four breakers. 
because those four breakers are in the overlapping zones. You with me? So if we if we if we trigger protection for zone for the bus bar, it will separate everything that is connected to it. Similarly, because zone one and two are, are connected, if I were to have a fault on zone one, in this instance, it is showing the generator separate from the transformer, all right? But if I had a problem on, on zone one, which is the generator, it would automatically cause the equipment in zone two to trip. So I remove that from the, um, from the system. Are we clear? This is part of the reason why you don't want what we call fault escalation, which is what has resulted in many of the all island blackouts that we have had here in Jamaica, where um, you may have, let's say, zone five. Here is zone five. Let me, let me use that different thing. Here is zone five. Yes? That is protecting this transmission line. All right? Now, if we had a fault on the transmission line, what we want is that um, these two breakers should trip. If they don't trip, what is going to happen is that the fault would then escalate into becoming a boss fault. Because you know zone five overlaps zone four and zone seven. So ideally, ideally, and you know, if you go back to all those definitions that we gave you regarding in protection, ideally, you want to be able to sectionalize your system. Yeah? You want it to remove the smallest possible um, part of the network, the smallest, um, smallest possible section of the network. So if, if you have Fault P1, ideally, you would want these two breakers to trip. But we'll, we'll do a little exercise um, later um, in terms of, in terms of um, getting an appreciation for overlapping zones and what, what's the impact in having the overlap. We'll do that in a few. So if I have this as my simple um, system, the question is, you know, how do we put these in, in, in zones? And maybe I should just ask you, how many zones you, you see here? First of all, how are you going to determine the, the number of zones we have? Let's not get into the code, but I'm asking, how are you going to determine it? Come on, man. Remember, you know. You can you open my counter. Huh? So that will be the breakers. breakers. Huh? Um, your user can just sit and try to get each individual piece in a zone for itself, each individual part of the network in a zone by itself. Oh, what, what, what does that sound like to you? All right, this, uh, I'm sorry, I can't help it. But it's almost going back to networks, no? You remember when you did networks, one of you started counting components and nodes? You remember that first class? All right, you don't have to remember, but I remember. <laughs> All right. And that's exactly what you are coming back to. So you know we'll have to look at the number of components you have, right? So we have, of course, for the generator transformer, we can make that into a single zone. So each of these would be a zone, right? So we have three. We have these transmission lines. 
counting components. So already we gone um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six zones. But with each of those, we now have our bus bars. So we got 10 zones. All right. Question is, where, where, are the, where would we want the overlaps? So I've drawn the zones in red. So in terms of overlaps, let's look at line two, four. Where would the overlaps be? I would now have to make that overlap with all of that. So it means that if I get up falls on line, on the line, anywhere on the line, then it would cause both B42 and B24 to trip. I know it look confusing now, right? So I want, if that fault is there, I want these two breakers to trip. Next question, because of the overlap, that's yes, because of the overlap. If the form doesn't clear in time, it means that this is not going to escalate to a bus fault. So it means that B4 is going to trip. This is going to escalate to a bus fault, which means that these two are going to trip. So if 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 not clearing uh, P1, well, not clearing P1 in time will escalate the fault and more customers would lose power. If you had clear that fault, only the customers, I mean, no customers are really connected to those four, but for the purpose of our discussion, yeah? Only those associated with bus four would have a problem. You with me? But if it escalates, the only people with, with power would be those on buses one and three. And the question is, are we sure that these two generators can carry all the load that is on one and three? Those are some of the issues that would have gone into an all island blackout because when you lose a major generator, it means that it puts pressure on the other generators and they will ultimately pull out from synchronism. So everybody crash. That's a serious oversimplification, but I hope you, you get the picture. Do you have any questions, queries, or concerns? Yeah, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, regarding when you close B21, um, I know that anybody highlight B12 or B32, um, even though they're outside of the the zone that would have been at bus two, um, would it would it not trigger these as well? All right. Seeing that the whole line would be removed from the system. Would here is my fault. This is the fault. Yes. yes. And they are saying that why is it that this and this would not trip? So that it escalated to a bus fault at bus two. Right. Uh -huh. And you had circled that you don't want to close. You don't want to open B21 and B23. Mm -hmm. What I was saying, if, if we're opening these, why, why would we still attempt to energize the rest of the line? It's not a matter of trying to energize the rest of the line. The point is what you have is a bus fault. So the, the, the protection system would recognize this, the system that you set up for the fault, for, for, the, for the bus, would recognize the fault being on the bus, having escalated. So it would take out the breakers associated with the bus bar. Now, it, you can, you can, based on the fact that this is a transmission line, you can have a situation where once of a, a, a breaker on the line trips, then it trips both ends. But that would be based on the protection for the line. 
So let me go again. You would trip one, two, and three, two, based on that escalation. If within your system, the mechanism is such that once one breaker on the line opens, the other opens, yes? But in this instance, what you have is a, well, really the fault is down here, yes? Fault is really down there. And if you, if, if what you have is, is an escalation, so, so it's taking out the bus bar breakers. But the mechanism can be built in that once one breaker, breaker opens, because the lines would still be energized, as you would have tested when, we, when you looked at, uh, at load flow, where we said that when you are removing a line, you must remove both ends. Yes, that is something that I hope you would have picked up from the, the load flow lab. Yes, no? You guys scary me with the silence, don't you? Huh? But anyway. Um, no, that's ideal in, 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 in carrying out your, 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 your maintenance. But from a fault standpoint, what you have here is a most fault, and those will go out. Right? Any, any other any other question? Or if you're if you want to you have anything you want to follow up on that, Mr. Johnson? No, no, sir. I had to step out from the computer, so I'll go. So we have just you know identified the zones. And um, in terms of the, the fall that we identified. So we, we, we identified the, the, the zones for the buses. We know where they would overlap, right? Of course, in your own time, you know, it would be nice if you redrew it and did it neatly, yes? But for now, and we mark it up and, and can't use it. So if I have a fault here at P2, Yes. What would you expect to operate? Which breakers sir, would you expect to operate? Sir, would that be B21, B23, and B24? Yes. So ideally, this is really a bus fault. Even though I am showing it, yes, um, as if it's on the line. It's actually behind the breaker, so it's really a bus fault. So these breakers should operate. What about 2-4? Well, with, with, the, with that one, the line 2-4. Um, if I were to have a fault on 2-3, line 2-3, which breakers do you expect to operate? B23 and B32. Yeah, all right. So it would leave this intact because that has nothing to do with the fault. Because remember now, although it's, it's not shown in on this diagram, well, maybe it doesn't exist really, but you, you, you would want to leave the generator intact. All right, all right. so that's, that's basic introduction. So I want to talk now about primary and backup protection. Um, for primary protection, what we have is the protection with primary or chief responsibility to identify or identify and isolate the zone. So coming back to what I said to you just now, Mr. Johnson, with the escalation, it became a, a bus bar fault. So it is, it would be the, 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 the breakers associated with the bus bar that will trip, that will open, all right? Um, with those opening, the, the, the um, at one, two, and three, two, they may ultimately open because you then would have an open circuit for 
because the lines would be open at the other end. So they would trip based on it being an open circuit. I know that most of our analysis so far um, in terms of faults, we have been talking about um, short circuits. Yes? But open circuit is also a fault. All right? Okay. So that's your primary. Now, we know that the, the protection is 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 not a I mean we 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 aim for it, but it's not a hundred percent reliable. And so we want some backup, just in case, some just in case protection. Yes. Um, with your with your backup, and there are some keywords that we are using here. It operates independently. of the components in the primary protective system for obvious reasons. Right? Because you will only have need to use backup protection. Backup protection only comes into play if primary fails. Now, if you are relying on the same equipment or the same components in the primary, to operate your, 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 your backup, you may end up having both primary and backup failing because you can't say what it is in the primary which caused it to fail. Fair enough? So a key um, um, aspect of your backup is that it must operate independently of the components within, a, within the primary system. Um, the the backup can be can be set to up to 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 mimic the primary or operate only if the primary fails. All right. Um, well, that, that don't really need any explanation. Mm -hmm. So it either operates along with the primary, in other words, making sure, or it operates only in the event of failure. You can also have um, a tertiary system, yes? So you have three separate protection systems. So in the main, we're not, I, I, I can't think of any um, line or, or system in Jamaica that requires tertiary. But I know in, in this, this material was taken from a British based textbook, and I know that um, some of their systems, um, you know, they, they go crazy in terms of um, backup. All right. So you have. Um, You have redundancy in terms of the transmission line. So right around the country, you have the 400 kilovolt grid. And each 400 um, transmission line has, a, has another one running parallel to it. All right? And that goes right around. So they are really crazy in terms of, in terms of, in terms of maintaining um, supply. All right? So, you know, a couple, well, no, it's now into decades, yeah? When you had London blackout and people walking home, that was, you know, really strange because that voltages are, you know, something you really don't even talk about in, in, in the UK. Right. Um, now, these protection systems will necessitate you having independent CT and VT arrangements. And you will understand the, the you will understand that a, a, a circuit that you're protecting using independent, especially independent VTs must be important because the VT 
is almost as expensive as your power transformer. So for you to use separate VTs for the system, it, it gives you um, a, a, a clear indication as to how important um, the circuit uh, needs to be or equipment or whatever you, you're protecting at that level. All right. So we thought about backup being either remote or local. What do we mean by that? I want you to locate or, or to bear in mind that all this protection that we're talking about, everything takes place in a substation. So even though I am protecting a line, all these, uh, everything that we're talking about, each bus bar here represents a substation, All right? So it's happening within a substation. Okay, you know, we have a line you know, within a substation. So you go from line to a next substation. Yeah? So with that said, the backup protection, either being remote, or local simply mean that for the local, it is occurring within the same substation. For remote, the backup is being provided outside of the substation. We clear? Nice and easy. So backup is either remote or local. All right? So if it is outside the substation, we have it. We are saying you're outside the area where the circuit breaker and really are located, right? Which is then outside of the substation. And if it's local, yeah, it's within the area where they are located, or in other words, within the same um, substation. So Sir, if you're so primary primary um, protection is always local, right? Yes, because uh, no, no, no. Let's just not think of it. Remember, primary protection. Yeah, well, that's that's almost a bit redundant, if you understand what I'm saying. Because primary means that you're protecting the equipment of interest. So it has to be in the local where the equipment is. You with me? But when we talk about remote or local, it's really about the backup. So it would be secondary and tertiary that we will be speaking to, backup protection. Because the primary has to be, be um, associated with the equipment being um, considered. You with me? You sure? Don't add it just to get rid of yes, me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. So, good. You have, you have three minutes to draw this thing, and then we're going to go through it later. You know what? It's going to be in the recording, so let's not waste time drawing. Let's, just let, let's focus on it. Um, I also, I didn't put them in, but we would have all right. So these need to be in. Why well, I didn't put them in for whatever reason. So these will show the overlaps. All right. So although I'm not sure there are overlaps here. All right. So this is my system. I have um, five bus bars. Yeah, and what we want to do, we're going to fill out a table. And once you have filled out this table, yeah, you will be able, you, you would have a better appreciation for everything we have said today about zones of protection. All right, so remember this 
is in the I'm trying to remember if I have it in school or two, but anyway, regardless, it's going to be in the recording, so you, 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 you can, you can uh, come back to it. This is a table we are going to fill out. All right? So let me explain what we have already put in the table. Okay? So this is the information I'm providing you with. I'm giving you the breakers that have tripped. So I'm telling you the breakers that have operated, and I want you know to look at the network and try to decide what could have happened to cause those three breakers to trip. All right, so let's go back to the network. So four, five, and eight breakers. Four, five, and eight. Keep in mind the overlap. So I'm going to take off the ink just to make things a little clear. All right, so removing the ink. So the breakers that. Uh, that have tripped, breaker four, which is this one, breaker five, and breaker eight. Four, five, and eight. All right? The question is, with those three breakers operating, what's the possible fall on the system? Anybody? Let's stab at it. I mean, you know, we're learning today. There's no wrong or right. Um, sorry, it could be a fault on bus bar C or on line six. No, 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 no keep it's the one of them. So bus bar C. Don't go back one side of it, Mr. Buchanan. Stay with him. Stay with me. So if bus bar C, yes, had the fall, I want you to tell me which breakers should have operated. That would be four, five, and six. Beautiful. So the breakers that should have operated would be four, five, and six. Next question. Which breaker failed? Um, that would be six. Beautiful. So breaker six failed. Yes. Which breaker operated as backup? Breaker eight. Breaker eight. Next question, is breaker eight operating as local or remote? It would be remote. Why? Because the, we're well, assuming that the part is on C, so it would be within the air we'll C, which would be four, five, and six, but breaker eight wouldn't be in the same area as post bar C. Because it's a different zone. It's not just the zone, but this is a line. So it tells you that it is further away. You with me? Yes, sir. So, so bus bar C and bus bar E are separated by a transmission line. So it is remote backup. So you're correct, but I want to make sure. So we look back at our table now, which is what we just filled out. All right, so Mr. Buchanan said the possibility is bus C. We all agree. The possible but um, the breakers that should operate, breakers four, five, and six. The breaker which failed, breaker six. The breaker which operated as backup, breaker eight. And the comments is that it is remote. Everybody with me? All right, now, let's, the other possibility I put in is that if we had a fault on line CE, so let's look back at CE. So the fault is on CE. So if the fault is on CE, Johnson, which breakers should have operated? The fault is on C, E, you would operate on six and eight. So six and eight would operate. Good. Is that Duncan? Yes, sir. Which breaker would have failed? On breaker six. Breaker six. Beautiful. 
Miss Gray, which break has operated as backup? Sir. Four and five. Four and five. Beautiful. And Mr. D you say I've given everybody a piece, you know. Mr. Darby. Yes, sir. Are four and five operating as local or remote backup? It would be local because it's on the same bus. With it's on the same bus with what? With um, where the fault is located, which is on CE. The line, the fault is located on line CE, and it's on the same bus as C. Bus C. Okay. All right. So your answer is correct but your reasoning is incorrect. So it is local, but what? It, which breaker, anybody, which breaker or breakers is four and five backing up? Breaker six. Breaker six. <laughs> and breaker six is on the same bus bar with those that are backing it up. So in other words, it's in the same substation. That is why it is local. So it, 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 it isn't about the line. It is about the fact that the backup breakers are within um, the same local. We get, the, we, we get the difference? Yes, sir. All right, good. So what I want you to do, um, here's my table. I don't worry. I do this to everybody. So here's my table. I give you the possibilities. No, I don't want you to be unrealistic. So with, with this first one, um, I, you know, some people might say, well, you know, the possibility is that there was a fall on A. Remember four, five, and eight were, were the breakers, right? And they'll say, yeah, man, a fall on A. That would mean two, three, um, and six would have to fail, which, which technically means that the engineering um, vice president of this company should be fired. Because if you're going to have three breakers failing for one fall, something wrong. Are you with me? So that would be sort of far-fetched. So I want you to be realistic in your, in, 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 in um, the, the selections that you make. That's it for me for today. So you have that, you have that earlier exercise. You have this one to go through. And um, yeah, we check back with you tomorrow. Who is that is absent? I know Christoph, who else was? Sure, oh, Morris. Oh, Morris. Okay. All right, so, you know, you can't afford to miss class. So. You can't imagine if we were going through us, you'd have to come with pillows, but it's all right. We, we, we will work with it. Um, in terms of the recordings, I'm going to, I'm not going to um, put my record recordings for protection on YouTube. I will make them available in the, in the, um, that same Google account I created, or system Google account. So you'll go there and access the recordings. That's where I'll, I'll, I'll put them. All right. And I will simply share it. I will share the recordings with the Google account. You all have the password, etc. cetera. All right. So you watch it as much as you want, but you don't share it with anybody. We kind of mean with protection. I'm sorry. Huh? 
Okay. Well, that's it. Yes. Take care. Take care, sir. All right. Bye-bye.